Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then I'm so happy to meet you. If not, then welcome back. As always, please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and turn on your notifications bell, and you will get notified each time I have a new upload. I will leave my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook details in the description box below, and I'll also leave my email if anyone wants to get in contact. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about the proposed disability reforms by the Irish government. I do have some notes written down here because I've taken some quotes from the Green Paper and I, I don't want to get them wrong. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is, what it supposedly aims to do, and then my main issues or concerns with it. So I'm going to get straight into it. But if anybody wants to keep the conversation going in the comments below, or has anything to add then please do so to start off the government is publishing the green paper proposal to help reform disability payments the aims listed in the green paper are number one to encourage a higher level of employment for people with disabilities and number two to better insulate or protect disabled people who cannot work from poverty and deprivation Okay, the reforms will include a three tiered system approach. Level one, this is what's listed in the green paper, high support, very low capacity to work. Level two, medium support, low to moderate capacity to work. And level three, low support, moderate to high capacity to work. So that's kind of taking those main bits from the green paper. I have read it. I've read it three times actually because it's not the easiest thing to understand. But I want to talk about my main concerns. So I suppose first of all I would say a concern of mine would be how are people going to be assessed and what is the criteria for each of these levels. Putting disabled people into three categories to me is very much oversimplifying what it is to be disabled. Disability can fluctuate from one day to another, depending on an individual person's needs. So I feel putting them into levels, it's oversimplifying what it means to be disabled, but also I would be concerned as to what the assessment process would be for that, what sort of stress that would put on an individual, and who has the authority to decide who is in what level. The next um, concern I would have would be, is the goal of the department of the government to get people in let's say level two and three completely off benefits is that is that what the goal here is um are they just wanting to get people off disability payments is that the goal and if so are people going to be pushed into something that's probably not suitable for them my next um concern is currently if a person is on disability allowance they can earn 165 euro a week without their benefits being um taken away or being affected i'm not sure is that going to continue is that going to change is that going to be different for each level another thing is what will this tiered system mean for extra supports that disabled people get such as the medical card the fuel allowance the household benefits package and um, a free travel card so what does it mean for all of them and again is it going to be different for each of these levels my next concern would be the expectation on people attending the intro office meetings my concern would be how often would people be expected to have these meetings and also an issue i would have would be what sort of training are people going to be pushed into what sort of employment is it going to be suitable for them another thing is if a disabled person doesn't drive will transport be arranged for that person to work or to an intro office meeting i feel like there's a lot as i read this paper i feel like there's so much that they just didn't touch on and makes me wonder have they even thought of any of these things and Actually, one of my biggest concerns would be that it seems to me that no 
no disabled person had any role in in writing this green paper um i would love to know if any disabled people did but as far as i know they didn't i know now they're doing consultations with the public which is grand but i feel like it should have been done when the green paper was being written rather than just doing it now it feels a bit like closing the door when the horse is bolted sort of thing why why wouldn't consultations have been done before the green paper was actually written another concern i had and this was something that i thought of is there going to be a financial incentive to employers to employ disabled people and if so would that money not make more sense to be in the pockets of disabled people or to put that money into making society a better place for disabled people as in improving healthcare, improving transport. There's so many things that could be improved, but I do wonder, is money going to be going into employers' pockets as an incentive to hire disabled people? Because we know from various studies that have been done that there is a high percentage of disabled people underemployed and I mean a lot of that has to do with the fact that some employers don't want to hire disabled people so I wonder how the department is going to encourage employers to employ disabled people is that going to be through financial incentive my next concern and this this is probably the biggest one is the effect on disabled people's mental health. I have talked to so many people since this came about. I know the massive impact it's already had on people's mental health. And I can't imagine moving forward that it's, that it's not gonna to continue to have an impact on disabled people's mental health. We know that in the UK, when similar changes were made, similar reforms were made, that the percentage of disabled people committing suicide, suicide rates went up, which is extremely alarming. And it makes me wonder, has the government actually put any thought into this? It seems like a poorly thought out and as I said, the fact that it doesn't seem that any disabled people had any part in creating this green paper. And it makes me really concerned because I've already seen so many people it has had such a negative impact on their mental health. They're stressed, they're concerned, they're worried about their future, they're worried about what might happen, what might be expected of them. And I feel like that is so concerning and as this process continues with consultations, I think it's so important that the department and the government can see the impact it's already having on people's mental health. Another concern I have would be, are employers going to be understanding of a disabled person's needs? So let's say they're employing somebody who has fibromyalgia, for example. Are they going to be understanding on a day when that person cannot get out of bed because of the pain? Are they going to be understanding to that? Are they going to be understanding to an autistic person who has burnout and has to take three weeks off? That to me concerns me as to how employers, will, will they have any understanding of what it is? means to be disabled and will they have any understanding of how they can help their employees i feel like with this green paper there should have been a lot of conversation around it before it was written there should have been consultation around it before it was written and before it was brought out and before it sent so many disabled people into a panic and i feel like had there been more consultation before it was published it might have alleviated some of the stress that it's now causing. They're my main issues, my main concerns with the green paper, 
with the proposed reforms. I know a lot of people in the disabled community would share my concerns, but do, if you have other concerns or issues that you feel are important, then please do comment down below. I suppose the next question is, what can we do? So, there are going to be three public consultations. One on the... Sorry, everyone, my camera got off there. I was just getting on to the public consultations, which are the 9th of November in Dublin and online, the 14th of November in Cork, 23rd of November in Athlone. To register for these, you search the Department of Social Protection on Eventbrite. You can also make a submission. The deadline is in December. And if you want advice or tips on how to make a submission, then I would check out Neuro Pride Ireland. You can also email your local representatives. Keep the conversation going and be sure to share the correct information. And also, I think it's really important is for people to take care of themselves, take care of their mental health, because I know that this has been an extremely stressful time for a lot of people. Um, I hope I, I covered it quite well. I wanted to focus mainly on my concerns or issues in this um, video. Uh, if you have anything you want to add, then please comment down below. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching today's video as always. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.